Hey, folks, today we're sponsored by Untuckit.com, shirts made exclusively for men who wear their shirts untucked. Look, if you're wearing a button-down shirt untucked, the length of the shirt is critical. But everyone knows finding a shirt that looks good untucked is not easy, my friends. Untuckit.com has solved this problem. Their shirts are designed to fall at the perfect length, no matter what your size. Visit Untuckit.com and improve your wardrobe today. Use the promo code MARIN for a special 10% discount. And shipping is free both ways. The right shirt can make all the difference. Untuckit.com. U-N-T-U-C-K-I-T dot com. Shirts designed to be worn untucked. We're also sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website, portfolio, and online store. For a free trial and 10% off your purchases, visit squarespace.com slash WTF and enter offer code MARK at checkout. That's M-A-R-C, MARK. Squarespace, a better web starts with your website. All right, let's do the show. You want to do the show? Let's do the show. Come on. Let's do it. All right, let's do this. How are you, what the fuckers? What the fuck, buddies? What the fucking ears? What the fuck, Nicks? What the fucksters? What the fuck's the bulls? What the fuck, O'Berry Thins? What the fuck, Knuckles? What is that? I like that one. Look, I don't know. How are you? Nice to see you again. I'm Mark Marin. Nice to meet you. This is WTF. Thank you for listening. I would like to apologize to the people of Charleston, South Carolina. I am not going to be there. I said I was going to be there the last show, but I am not. I'm going to be in Charlotte, North Carolina on August 14th through uh, through the 16th of August at the Comedy Zone. Apologies to those people in Charleston who might have gotten excited and then gone to my website and said, what the fuck is he talking about? My mistake. Look, today on the show, the very funny Rebecca Corey is here. Uh, she's not only funny and uh, a live wire, but she uh, she's the organizer uh, of Stand Up for Pits. It's an advocacy group dedicated to stopping animal abuse, specifically against pit bulls. And she did that big march on Washington last month. Uh, she has some future events coming up. If you want to go to Stand Up for Pits to learn more, I would do that. I would do that if I were you before I get to her, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chat a bit. I'm gonna be talking to uh, my buddy Jesse Thorne in a minute too for a few minutes about his boat ride thing that I refused to go on and that I had to pull out of last year, much to uh, the chagrin of people involved. I apologize for that. We had to start shooting a TV show. What, Mark? You have a TV show on the air? I do. Marin on IFC on Thursday nights, 10 o'clock east and west and 9 o'clock in the middle at some places. Tonight's episode, if you're listening to this on Thursday, the 5th of June, revolves around the very real event of the departure and uh, mysterious disappearance of my cat Boomer a year ago to the day that I started shooting season two. So in other words, the day I started shooting the first season of my TV show, my cat Boomer disappeared. And to this day, I hope... I hope, as you know, that Boomer lives. I hope that the best I can hope for is that he's comfortably uh, living in a nice air-conditioned place where he's he's eating on a never-ending supply of yummy wet food out of spite against my insistence on dry food just because it's more practical and it's easier for me to deal with. So tonight's episode of Merriman revolves around the day that Boomer disappeared. Um, and I, it's it's uh, you know some of my uh, some of my episodes are a bit touching, folks. A bit touching, but I'm very proud of my show, and I'd like you to watch it. So that's tonight on IFC or after, if you want to DVR it. You know, Marin is the name of the show. Now, getting back to date, I will be in Chicago, Illinois, at the first annual 26th Annual Comedy Festival on June 14th. On the 24th of June, I will be at the Lawrence Arts Center. That's in Lawrence, Kansas. On the 25th of June, I will be at the Firebird in St. Louis, Missouri. The 26th through the 28th, I will be at the Comedy Attic in Bloomington, Indiana. And then I'm going to be doing a bunch of dates on the Oddball Fest this year. These are dates in Austin, Dallas, Houston, Tampa, Charlotte, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, Denver, Colorado. Ooh, I'm going to Red Rocks. I'm going to perform at Red Rocks on that stage. That's why I went. That's why I took that date. I'll also be at the Mountain View uh, Shoreline Amphitheater in Mountain View, California, in the Verizon Amphitheater in Irvine, California, on that oddball festival business. So there's that. 
I'm also going to be at the North by Northeast Tech Conference in Toronto. Okay, I am doing the keynote up there. That's soon. That's in a couple of weeks. I didn't mention this, did I? I? Do you remember when I had the director? You remember when I had Harry Dean Stanton on? And uh, then I, and I had the director of the movie, the documentary about him on, that woman, Sophie Huber. Well, they're both on episode 464 of this show. You can still listen to that episode whenever you want. But the film that I thought was a beautiful film, uh, Harry Dean Stanton, Partly Fiction, is now available on iTunes, uh, along with the official soundtrack, which has Harry singing. Go check out Harry Dean Stanton, Partly Fiction, on Facebook if you want more info on that. Uh, I, I told Sophie that I would tell you guys about it, because I think it's a beautiful movie. And uh, it is the movie that inspired me to... Uh, to interview Harry Dean Stanton and got me the opportunity to interview Harry Dean Stanton. It's the movie where I, I watched it for an hour and a half or however long it is. And I realized that, gee, he didn't even, he didn't talk much, you know, during the documentary about him. So I'm going to go interview him because I know that I can crack that nut. And I proceeded to get, uh, nervous and anxious and, uh, stumble all over myself. But many people think it was a good interview. Back to the business at hand. So have not been feeling great. Did not know what it was. So on uh, Monday morning, I went and I got an uh, MRI. It was my first MRI. I was excited about it. I think uh, I think everybody remembers their first MRI, don't they? Now, as some of you know, I, um, I've been having these uh, symptoms. I mean, my hands and feet are tingling, and now I've got pressure in my sinuses, and, you know, and one of my ears keeps, you know, popping, and I've got weird headaches here and there, and bing and bang and boom and what have you. Apparently, because everything is going so well in my life, I've decided to reward myself with a deep and and very real to me cancer fear. That's how my brain works. Hey, man, finally, everything's going pretty good. I'm dying. I'm dying. And so I focused on that, went to the neurologist, and he found no evidence of neuropathy, no evidence of mobility problems. No evidence of anything. My reflexes were very good, actually. He was kind of a cranky guy. I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed going to him. I like uh, doctors that seem a little over it, but still very focused. So finally, I'm going to go get my MRI. Never had an MRI before. It's a machine that takes up the entire room, and they lay you down, and they put your head in sort of a braced position, and they sort of wheel you in. And you just sit there in a tube with your head in a tube. And then this piece of high-tech equipment makes more fucking noise than, than I've ever heard a machine make that should be a high-tech machine. Literally, the process of an MRI is sort of like you sitting there going like, what's that sound? What's wrong with this machine? Is this an old one? Why is it fucking clanking like that? Couldn't they make it a, a quieter machine? What's going on inside the machine? And I started to have a panic about my fillings. Is it going to suck my fillings through my skull? Because they took my keys and they took the metal. What about fillings? Am I going to pull one of my, is it, is it my filling going to, like, is it going to go on and like a bullet? My fillings are just going to pop out of the top of my head. Clearly, you know, they, that, that didn't happen. So here's who I am. So I get this MRI. I'm fairly convinced at this point that I have a large tumor pressing against the inside of my face. I have not been a hypochondriac in a long time, but I was pretty sure I was going down. So I was making plans and trying to figure out, you know, what I would do, you know, when I found out that I had a tumor in my head. And uh, sadly, you know, beginning to drink again was way down on the list. So that means I'm a little more sober than I thought. But, you know, there was there was obviously like, well, I'm going to, going to eat a lot of stuff that I'm usually afraid of, and I would probably like to have sex as much as possible. And uh, I guess I would have to hire somebody with some of the money I've saved just to hang out and, um, and, and, and be there for the whole process. This is sad. Jeez. So here's where it gets weird. So I get the MRI, and then, I, you know, there's a tech. There's a guy that, that runs the machine while you're there. So now I'm convinced that I have a, a tumor, at least, you know, the size of my brain, in my brain. And I get out of this tube, and this tech says, uh, you did fine in there. You know, you did well in there. And I'm like, well, thank you. He And he says, yeah, it's, uh, you know, not everybody does that well, but you did well. And I said, oh, so you saw it? He goes, yeah, I'm the tech. I saw, I, yeah, I saw the MRI. And I'm like, well, what did what, you think of the MRI? How, how did it look? He goes, well, I'm not a... 
I'm not a doctor, so I can't really comment on it. But you, I said, but you know, yeah, I mean, was it okay? He's like, I really can't. And then as I'm walking out, he goes, take care of yourself. Like that. Take care of yourself. Did you hear my tone just then? Take care of yourself. So, of course, I walk out of there going like, oh, fuck, I'm done. Did you hear that? And now I've got to drive in my car going like, does he say that to everybody? That that sounded loaded to me. Take care of yourself. Like, i got to struggle ahead. So I'm freaking out about that. And then I want to get the results as soon as possible. So he also tells me that, like, what's going to happen is they're going to he's going to send the MRI to the lab. They're going to rip it to a CD. And then uh, the radiologist will do a report. They'll mail the CD to my doctor uh, and the report as well. Snail mail. It's like, what the fuck? What do you got to commit to this old paradigm for, man? Snail mail? Are you fucking kidding me? It, don't they realize that people are panicking and freaked out? It's a big deal. Like, it'll probably be three or four days because we got to mail it by Pony Express to your doctor. I was a little livid. So I'm working angles. I'm like, all right, look, what if you rip it to CD today and you get the radiologist on it today and then I come back here, I pick the shit up, and I drive it to my doctor? Like, I'll be the messenger. I'll be the delivery guy. And ultimately, that's what happened. I came back in an hour to radiology. I got the CD. I called up before I came back to see if the radiologist had made a report. I took the report to my doctor, and then I drove over to this guy's office, and I deliver it to his receptionist who says she'll put it on his desk in the morning. He's he's gone for the day. Fine. And, And everybody's treating it like it's no big deal. It's very weird when you go to a hospital. I had this moment where I realized when I was admitted to the hospital for the MRI that these people work with this every day. Thank God they're there. Thank God for people who have uh, given their life to working with with sickness because we're all going to be there unless you go out quick. And it's nice to know that these people are there. And I don't know why I expect them to be concerned and freaked out all the time. They can't really. So I call the receptionist at the doctor's office. I'm like, hey, it's Mark Marin. She goes, hi, can I help you? And I'm like, yes, you can. I dropped the evidence of my brain tumor off at your office, and no one's called to confirm my deepest, darkest fear. So I thought I would call you to hasten the process. What's going on? I didn't say that. I said, it's Mark Marin. I was wondering if the doctor, and she's like, yes, he has it. He'll call you this afternoon. Between three and seven. I'm like, what is he? What is he, Time Warner? Between three and seven? Fine. So I go about my day. And then the call comes. And I, I'm telling you, man, I thought I had it. And I'm, you know, look, but whatever. I'm a drama queen. What do, what do you want from me? So I see the call come in. No, no caller ID. I'm like, hello. He goes, yeah, Mark Marin. I'm like, hey, doc, what's up? He goes, well, I looked at the MRI and you have, uh, uh, the normal brain for a man your age. That, that was a little loaded. You know, like, I mean, I, I could have gotten into it a little bit with him. Like, what, what, do you, what do you mean exactly? What? But I didn't. I said, so everything's all right? He goes, yeah, it's fine. And I'm like, okay. So uh, there's nothing there? You didn't see anything? He goes, no, it's, it's normal for your age. And I'm like, okay. And then I, I, the guy was about to hang up. I'm like, thank you very much, doctor. I appreciate it. I go, no tumors? No tumors. He's like, what? No. No. And I, I was like, all right, I'm relieved. Thank you. And I hung up and I don't I don't feel great today either, but I got to track it down. So I don't know when this is all going to end, but I am relieved that I do not have a brain tumor. Now, someone tell me what's wrong with me, please. Emmy season is upon us, and one thing I've noticed from doing this show over the years is that a lot of our listeners happen to work in the television industry. Some of those people even work with me on my TV show. Anyway, our friends at A&E just want to remind all eligible Emmy voters to cast your ballots before the deadline on June 20th. Also, when casting your vote this year, please be sure to consider the second season of Bates Motel for the following categories. Outstanding Drama Series. Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series for Freddie Highmore. You might remember him when he was a little kid and he was in Finding Neverland and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. But now he's playing young Norman Bates and it's great. It's an intense performance. Also, Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series for Vera Farmiga. 
Vera is always great. You might have heard me and Jason Reitman talking about her performance in Up in the Air recently. And, of course, she was great in The Departed. She got an Emmy nomination last year for her incredible performance as the living, breathing embodiment of Norma Bates. And she's uh, she's really outstanding in the second season, folks. A&E genuinely appreciates your consideration this year. Uh, okay, look, you know, I'm going to talk to my friend Jesse Thorne is here. And we're going to talk about his boat ride. Jesse Thorne, of course, the guy who got me into podcasting in a way. Uh, I, I, I owe a debt of gratitude to him always. He hosts the show Bullseye on NPR, and he's uh, the Max Fun guy. He's got a few other shows he produces. Let's talk to Jesse Thorne. Jesse Thorne is in my garage for one reason. Yes. And, you know, I, I approach this from a place of, of contrition. <laughs> And uh, in sadness that I put you in a difficult position. But for me, I think I made the right thing because I'm not a boat guy. And I think when it came right down to the wire, I think I made the right decision for everybody. I don't think it would have been fun to have me on the boat. I think it would have been fun. Nobody on the thing is a boat person. That's a thing. I mean, think of Eugene Merman. Yeah. So I do a cruise called Boat Party That Biz. Right. Last year, Eugene was there. Eugene Merman showed up for, for a Caribbean cruise. Right. Wearing black jeans. Yeah. And a black chambray shirt. Okay. And by the end of it, he was in the pool wearing his black jeans and his black. So ultimately, he had a good time, but no matter how you slice it, he didn't bring the right clothing. He certainly didn't bring it. There's no doubt that he didn't. He should have brought a black uh, bathing suit. But he wasn't the he wasn't the he wasn't the only one. There was a rock and roll guy there whose band is called I want to say Abba Zamba. It sounds like you don't know who was on your boat, right? He wasn't a he wasn't a um, he wasn't a performer. He just came. He was a friends with the sound guy. Oh, Um, but he's in a very successful indie rock band and was a great guy. Mm -hmm. I wish I could remember the name of his uh, band. Yeah, but anyway, he came wearing exclusively indie rock clothes. Like uh, skinny jeans, and he looks sort of like Jesus. Uh huh. And he had a freaking blast. Yeah, it's Wait. weird. It's one of those things. Like you, it's the people. It's the people. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that makes a cruise terrifying. Yeah, I'm. I uh, I get motion sickness. I don't yeah. like the ocean. Right. I don't like the ocean for sort of existential reasons as much as anything else. Yeah. No, there's things you can't see under there, and when the water's too deep, who knows what's beneath you? I don't like looking at the horizon. Oh. I don't like being able to see the horizon. Uh huh. If I look out at the at the ocean horizon from the beach, yeah, I find it deeply disconcerting because it reminds me that the that my life is not infinite and that I'm going to die. Really? It doesn't waking up do that. <laughs> I am able to keep it at bay, Mark. At bay without water. Yeah. As long I, as you don't see it, if, as long as you don't see the water, you can keep it at bay. I think it might happen like if I was in like the Gobi Desert or something like that. But you have children. Yeah, but they're only half me, and I don't think my consciousness is transferred into them. It is. Well, we'll find out when I die if but they're it, still alive. But aren't they a distraction at least? They do keep you busy. All right. So this boat trip <laughs> last year. I didn't go, and I was scheduled to go. I felt bad. I had to cancel. I uh, I can't even remember the reason. You were your show was still oh, shooting right, then, right, and right. it got and your your call times got changed. That's right. Which you know it that happens. happens. Yeah, it's show yeah. business. It's who, it stunk, but it happened. Now who's going to be on the boat? Who who says they're going to be on the boat this year? All of these people are definitely going to be on the boat this year. List it off. Okay, we got uh, W. Kamau Bell, mm-hmm. uh, Kyle Kinane, mm. Greg Barrent. Guy Branham, Matt Bronger, oh, Tony good. Kameen. I love Tony Kameen. Tony's, Tony's great. He um, should host the entire ride. I, basically, that's my feeling about it, too. He should be there when people get there. He should host every <laughs> event on the boat. He really is one of those people that you wish could host. Him and Jimmy Pardo, like, if they, if the two of them could host everything yeah, forever, why not? I would be happy. Yeah. Uh, Chris Fairbanks is mm-hmm. going to be there, one of my favorites. Moshe Kasher, mm-hmm. Karen Kilgariff. Wow. The great Karen Kilgariff. Uh, who, oh, Natasha Leggero is going to be there. So yeah. Moshe and Natasha, was that the package? That was the package. I emailed Moshe and invited him. And at, at the time, I didn't know that the two of them were mm-hmm. dating. And he emailed me back, what do you think of Natasha? And I emailed him back, 
who do you mean, Natasha Leggero? I think she's funny. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, oh, good, can she come? (laughs) And I was like, yeah, okay, sure. See, that was was an amateur move. He should have said, Natasha's coming with me. (laughs) (laughs) You should put her on. Morgan Murphy? Did I say Morgan Murphy? No, you didn't, because I'd remember that. That's a ki- that's a killer lineup of comedians. That's an amazing lineup of comedians. Are there going to be musical guests this year? Yeah, John Roderick is hosting again this year. He's uh-huh. from the band The Long Winters, mm-hmm. and he is like a uh, he's a sort of bon vivant mm-hmm. in addition to being a musician. And uh, so, just one musician this year? No. All right. Well, th- okay. A- Lake, the indie pop group out of sure. Olympia, Washington, the great group Lake. They do uh, music on Adventure Time, among other things. Uh huh. Um, but wonderful band. Uh, Jean Grey, the uh-huh. rapper, Jean Grey. Has she ever been on WCF? No. She should, you should have her on. She, you guys would have a great time. Okay. Um, and Auntie Ballas, the oh, yeah. oh, wow. Afrobeat group out of Brooklyn. Huh. Um, so, 14 piece band. Four, I'm bringing a 14 piece band. I now, don't know why I made that decision. Now, besides does, that Auntie Ballas are so good. How does it work? Basically, so, like, you guys get half a boat? You, we get like it may even be less than half a boat, but we get we get special rooms on this ship. So yeah. it's a huge cruise ship with a million different. You know, it's not just shuffleboard. Like there's like, you know, a basketball court and there's a climbing wall food every half hour. There's a there's literally a place where you can go and get food at any time, mm-hmm. uh, including ice cream, mm-hmm. which is what I tended to go get mm-hmm. at any time. Yeah, and then there's. R- fancy meals at fancy meal times. And right. Everybody sits together at dinner. Uh, there's a, like a room where you can go and hang out at any time if you want to go hang out with people. Um, and then there's shows at night. And we get the showroom at night. Uh, it's like a nightclub room or something like that. But that's your room stage. for the whole the Exa- whole run. Exactly. And then during the day, um, one day you spend on a private island in the Bahamas. Uh huh. One day you spend in Nassau. Mm hmm. Funky Nassau. So that's it's two room. stops. Two stops. The, and the private island's called Coco Key. That's where you get a, uh, uh, what's that called? A ski do. Okay. Get yourself a ski do. That's what do you, my what recommendation. A lot, of, a lot of hooking up? A lot of people hooking up on this thing? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a, there's a whole, it's like not just ho- hooking up. But there's hooking up. There's also people bringing children. Okay. So, <laughs> what? <laughs> are, you, are you concerned? No. Are you concerned about the children that they might remind you of your own mortality? Is that yes, what's going on? Yes, always. Yeah. I, uh, but what it, w- are there events? Do you yeah, do there's the big, workshops and there's things. There's shows at night, and then, like, uh, Carol Kolb is going to teach a comedy writing class. In fact, her and Tony Kameen, she's married to Tony Kameen, mm-hmm. they're talking about maybe doing a humor in relationships workshop. Uh huh. Um, they've been married for a long time, and Carol is, Carol was most recently a writer for Community, mm-hmm. uh, but before that, a writer for Review with Andy Daly. Andy's, mm-hmm. I'm sure, been on the show, sure, right? Sure. It's the end of July, July 25th through 28th, I believe it is. 25th through, yeah, and it's a Friday through a Monday. And then on Thursday night, we have a party in Cape Canaveral, which is where we set a set sail from. So there's a big party the night before. If you're flying in from somewhere, you fly in on Thursday, we give you a cheap hotel room. And how many nice pe- hotel room. How many people did this last year? Hundreds. Really? Yeah, several hundred. Okay, well, there you go. You're not alone. It's a good time. You could go alone because you'll meet like-minded people if you're into the Jesse Thorne empire. This is not a thing. Like, you came to Max FunCon. No, I know. I enjoyed Max FunCon. Max FunCon is like a thing for people who are into my empire. This is just a thing for people who like music and comedy. comedy. Okay, but you are the host of Bullseye. You do Uh, run the Max Fun uh, empire. Uh, Jordan, Jesse, Go. And what are your other shows? Uh, Judge John Hodgman. Judge John Hodgman. Judge John Hodgman. That's your show as well. So, so this is this is for people that you know, many of my listeners enjoy this stuff. They enjoy comedy. They know the people you just mentioned. And how long is this thing? It's four days. I mean, it's Friday through Monday. Oh, I should have went. went. Monday should have went. Yeah, you could come on. You're the you were the executive producer of your show. You could have rescheduled the shoots. No, that doesn't. <laughs> you'd, you'd, be, you'd be surprised how how, sh- how quickly that uh, that power drops away. Mark, is that's how show business works, right? You, yeah, you reschedule my, my sh- television show shoots to make room for unpaid cruise? gigs. Sure, yeah, 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 that's exactly how it works. My name's on the show. I do what I want, <laughs> <laughs> unless the network doesn't want me to. All right. Well, Jesse, it's good seeing you. It's good to see and you, yeah, too. Where do they go again? Give me the website Boatparty.biz. Yeah. Boatparty.biz. And, and guess what? what? 50 bucks off if they type in Marin. Wow. $50. And a lot of people are going, folks. Don't be afraid. Yeah, this is, it's, it's super it's, fun. It's a, it's a, it's a highbrow mixer. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> high to middle. Middle high. Middle to highbrow mixer. So if you just have the haircut, you don't need the brains. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, that was a nice chat with Jesse. Okay, we're going to get to Rebecca Corey here in a second, but first I want to tell you we're sponsored today by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website, portfolio, and online store. And I can get you 10% off if you use Squarespace now. I know building a website can be intimidating, but with Squarespace, it's simple and easy. They have beautiful, logical design templates, and the whole thing is a drag-and-drop system. You don't need to know how to write code or anything like that. All right? And if you're still having problems, they have a support team ready for you at any hour through live chat and email. Look, I know a thing or two about starting an online business. If you decide to start your business using Squarespace to build your site, you'll be able to create an online store to sell whatever you want. Plans start at just $8 a month, and if you sign up for a year, you get your domain name thrown in for free. Start a trial with no credit card required and start building your website today. Visit squarespace.com slash WTF for a free trial and 10% off your purchases. Enter the offer code MARK at checkout. That's squarespace.com slash WTF. Offer code MARK, M-A-R-C, MARK. Squarespace, a better web starts with your website. Dig it. All right, so now let's talk to Rebecca Corey. She's great. I love her. Let's talk to her. Yeah, I I am one of those people that can have a pack of cigarettes. I can smoke it for, get through it for a month or so, and then not smoke for two months. Maybe have one or have some wine and smoke. Like I'm not, I don't. Really? Yeah, I don't wake up in the morning and go, if I don't, or I don't ever go, if I don't have, I don't do You don't know that feeling of like looking forward to the you know first two or three cigarettes with your coffee in the morning before you go to bed at night? Like, tomorrow is okay, because I'm going to be sitting at my table with a pack of Marlboro Reds and a fucking strong coffee, and I'm going to get jacked. I do know that one. You drop deuces immediately thereafter. Yeah. I know it. I know yeah. it well. I'm no stranger to it. Yeah. I mean, I'm a lady. Yeah. Well, what, do you, what do you go to bed looking forward to the next day? Coffee. Okay. But I don't need to have the cigarette. I never... But you got to have the coffee. You have to. Yeah. You have well, to. Right. Yeah. have to. But I, I did smoke for... I was married, and so I had a, a husband who was a really heavy smoker. Um, you were I, married? Yeah. My uh, my real last name is not Corey. I don't know anything about you. I know you don't. I know you don't. I know you're funny. Well, <laughs> and you got a fucking attitude. Wait, wait a minute, pot calling kettle. What? I, I didn't say I didn't. Wait a minute. Look, I, just because I make a statement doesn't mean I'm negating me uh, all right, in the all right. equation. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I think what we met each other once uh, on the Bob and Tom show. Where I don't think you said anything to me, and I'm surprised because I remember you given your attitude. No, I did. I did. I, I said I said hello, and then I think we even took a selfie. We took a selfie together. Okay. Selfie photo. When was that? Five. That was like that was six years ago. Five years. What ago. What were you doing up there? I was performing in where? Indianapolis. Which one? Bro, at the Indi- Crackers. At the, you were at Crackers. Headlining. Yes. And how'd that go for you? Well, I, I threw people, I threw, usually, when I do crackers, I usually throw a person out every, every show. For what? For heckling. Uh huh. And being drunk and stupid. And I go, what do you, what are you doing here? Friday Why late you? show? Yep. Both, both late shows. Uh huh. Where really. else do you work? Uh, I do, I do about 10 clubs a year. Six, I've never had a comedy booker in my entire career. So it's only just, just do, do what I, do what I can get. 10 a year. About 10 a year. Six to 10 a year. I do Tacoma Comedy Club. I do do wise guys. Wise guys in city. Utah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that place. Love it. So why are you not in bigger rotation, Rebecca, Corey? Because I don't have a comedy booker. I never have ever had a comedy booker. Have you tried? Yeah. Yeah. When I got when I got um yeah. Yeah, okay. I have have uh sure have. Yeah. Uh I uh got a half hour Comedy Central special. You did it. Yeah, it did. In the can. Done. Taped in the can. Killed it? It was all right. I don't care for the outfit. The boots were a poor choice. Whenever I look at it, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot of those. What was I thinking? When I look at that, I think, are you kidding? And by the way... And this is recently. Well, 2009. Yeah, but I still, just, you, still, you decided. You're like, was, these are the boots. W- was I an adult? Yes. Did I have... <laughs> You you had other choices. Yeah. yeah. Not only did I have a, a, a lot of choices, but I also had a lead time, a severe yeah. lead time. Sure, months. Went out, went to Bloomies, 
And Isn't that weird? We go shopping places we never shop before. Never. Never shop. And the outfit that I got is so... It is disgusting. You're basically and going out there with someone else's clothing on. An idiot. Unworn clothing. I, wore, I wanted to say something. <laughs> I wore tights in boots. Who does that? What, what, who, who instructed you to make the decision? It was me. It, yeah. was, it was me. It was all You thought, me. I'm going to try something new on my special. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try something new that they're going to record. Yeah. Surprised it didn't work out bits. Yeah. Surprised I didn't just, you know, go out there with some concepts and just wing it. I, I've done that. <laughs> and then you could be bar- embarrassed about two things. <laughs> <laughs> I dressed bad and I didn't do my material. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, flop sweat. All right, so you go out there. Did you ever wear those tights again? <laughs> no, no. No, I haven't. But I've, no. How about those boots? Nope. They're in my closet. I wore them one time. The shame boots? One time on your special? Yeah. You know what? Maybe I'll take them out and wear them to just, maybe it'll, <laughs> maybe it'll make me feel better about that. Uh-huh. It was just a horrible, it was just, it's the worst outfit. And there's a couple of bits I did in, in my act. Mm-hmm. Then you just like, I don't know. You know, do you look back at some bits of yours and go, what, 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 what was that? I do a lot of unfinished bits. I, I like. I'm, it's not unusual for me to do bits that are half baked on specials and TV appearances, and then I just tag them later. There's enough there to sort of get a laugh if someone else chimes in that I'm talking to. You don't want to think it through. You don't want to do a. I don't. I don't. I you know. I I wait till they're delivered to me. I talk, and then one day a thing will drop out of the ether, mm-hmm. and it'll be like you know when I'm cornered and I need it. Sometimes it comes. Sometimes it doesn't. I do not do not write them down. It's not the best system. Do you have a half hour special? Several. Okay. I have two on Comedy Central and one on HBO from ninety five. I have one from ninety nine. That Comedy Central half hour special, disaster. I got off stage at that special. <laughs> what are you wearing? What are you a black suit with a red shirt? Uh-huh. I had short hair. I decided for some reason I'm not real good at picking backdrops when they give you that option. <laughs> What'd you do? You... For that one? <laughs> Mine too is horrendous. Yeah. What'd... I chose a freak show banner. I thought like that'll make sense to people. So it's just a like a sideshow banner with a fat man and a mm-hmm. Siamese twins and that kind of thing. You could barely see it. Didn't quite add up. Uh the... was, it, was it part of a bit? No. Was it... Just your... No, yeah, it's just an idea. I'm like, you know, this is who Great. we are. This is who I am inside. Great. This is a the people will, people who will get it will get it. Yeah, and the people that don't, what do you think? And no one got them. No one got it, and the special was bad. The mm-hmm. audience was bad. The only person that was there for me when I got off stage mm-hmm. was my Coke dealer, who was uh, at the uh, the snack table, and he, I got off stage after doing my half hour special. That was difficult. Didn't go well. And he goes, "They got roast beef." <laughs> <laughs> that was my big you... night. They got roast beef. Did you <laughs> did some blow? Shortly after that, I stopped doing drugs altogether. Did you this, really? Yeah. The second special I did uh, during my tenure at Air America, which is it was political, and, and the material was really good, and the outfit was okay. What was it? Just one detail, at least. I wore some G-Star jeans. Okay, um, wait, were they pleated? No. Good. Uh, G-Star jeans I was wearing a lot. I wore a yellow Lacoste pullover and a, uh, okay. a blue blazer. All right. I'm not mad at that. And uh, my glasses were good. My hair was good. But again... Uh, backdrop, not great. Oh, what was it? Uh, backdrop, it was a herd of sheep heading the other direction. Okay, so I was, the idea was like, they're going, you look, you see me behind me, there's a herd of sheep. Going the opposite, they're yeah. b- the backs. The you back see end. their sheep's they're asses. Asses. Yes. And there's, they put one sheep on stage with me. Mm-hmm. So the idea was like, I'm not part of the herd, but during the whole special, a sheep's ass was like right next to my head because of the backdrop. The well, whole, the whole time. Why did you do that? Cause I thought like, yeah, I'm, t- I'm telling the truth, man. I was, that was the end of my like, hey, I'm fucking, you know, Different. I am. I'm, well, not different. I'm like, you know, like, this is, uh, I'm, I'm political, but I'm also seeing things clearly. Don't think like the herd. That was the end of my, my Bill Hicks influence. So that they were the, like, a, they were like, they represented lemmings. They were like, that's you're, right. You're, the herd. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, it's, it's, you know what? I appreciate the thought. I yeah, can appreciate yeah, that. But, uh, but nobody would get it. No. Just a sheep on stage and a bunch of sheep's <laughs> asses behind me. That's, I would just immediately think Ireland or. Yeah, no, no, no. I, Nothing. It, no, I, I, it was, they were all too complicated, too deep. The framing was not, to, nope. All right, so you did your special and, and <laughs> what, yeah. you, you, was that, did that launch you into the six clubs a year or? Oh, you can't believe the amount of heat that was around. <laughs> you can't believe. 
It was like, <laughs> it was like, I was getting calls every six months <laughs> <laughs> to do something. No. These are just people who, these clubs are just people who have liked what I've done throughout the years, have watched the evolution. That's what my backdrop was, was the evolution of me. Mm-hmm. Like all these physical Where'd you poses. start? Uh, started in LA. You did? 13 years ago. Yeah. Where do you come from? Well, I grew up in Seattle. Seattle, Washington. Sure did. Born really? and raised Kent, Washington, suburb of Seattle. What kind of suburb? Disgusting. It's the armpit of the state. It's a piece of shit. It's a pile of shit. It's a. Uh, it is a. Uh, is and you grew up there before it became like pristine and moneyed. No, it's still gar. It's still the garbage capital of Washington. How old? How old were you? How old are you? Mind if I ask? I will be forty three in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. So you were a child before the big uh, Microsoft thing, or no? Was that always there? When did that happen? Yeah, yeah. I was a child before. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the whole Seattle grunge thing and all that. I was there for all that crap. When you were yeah. young. Well, no. I mean, in high school, you could go see Mother Love Bone. You could go oh, see... Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Did you do that? No. No, I was into Mike Jackson. Really? Yeah. So that explains the tights and the boots, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what... <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. There is nothing for the rest of my life that will ever explain that. Mm-hmm. Ever. Yeah. There's nothing... That's a, a horror. I went on Conan wearing a black velvet Nehru jacket. Okay. Yeah. Uh, was it hot? Leather pants. No, you didn't. Yeah, was leather it, pants. Was it hot? I didn't care. I made a decision. I was like, I'm ready to handle this. <laughs> I did that. There's video footage of it, documented. <laughs> I went that- on. I went on. I went on Conan O'Brien with an outfit that some guy who lived around the corner from me designed and made in his factory. That's not true. It is. It's just this little fat kid who was uh, he was uh, a clothing designer. He said, I'd love to dress you. I said, that sounds great. I'm doing Conan in two days. So he whipped something up for me. I went right out there with it. You don't really, you don't, you just have this unabashed, you just don't give a shit. No, I give a lot of shit. I gave a lot of shit back then. It's not that I don't give it, I give a lot less of a shit now. Yeah. When you did know? you fully quit giving a shit? I think when I started the podcast, I, you know, I, I, you know, it was done. I was, do- I was over. And I, and I think everything, you know, post that was like gravy. I'm like, Hey, all I wanted was to be able to, to make a living and hopefully have health insurance and everything else was like, okay. But Kent, so w- Kent what, is where I grew up. let's paint a picture of the, the childhood home. Okay. Dad, push broom, mustache. I'm 411. So he tops out about four, five. Four, five, 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 six. I mean, not four, five. He would have been a little person. Um, tiny man, yeah. angry, violently angry. Chain smokes, lucky strikes. I used to eat them when I was five. I used to eat my dad's cigarette butts. So your dad has a huge mustache that's probably yeah. brown from the cigarettes. A well, bit. he's got. He's a, an Italian, a, 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 an angry. He looks like Super Mario Brothers. What does he do for work? He works at Boeing. Of and, course. And he, he air pressure tests airplanes. So he crawls around on, they, they take an airplane and they blow it up with air. And he crawls around on his hands and knees and he has a stethoscope thing yeah. and he listens for leaks. And when he hears a leak, he plugs it. With what? I would imagine some sort of serum. Putty? Yeah. Well, <laughs> so brings sort of... a little, little wad of clay with him and just <laughs> plugs it? Yeah. He's a he's a whole plugger for the new planes. He's in charge of probably, potentially, our lives, if and you think about you it. And would you trust him with that? No. Ugh, no. He's, he's, a, he's a, he always had nicknames for all of our neighbors, the dipshit. Uh-huh. Um, get, the dipshits lived across the street. Uh-huh. Um, pig farmers. Uh-huh. Were there pig farmers? Uh, no, he just oh. called them pig farmers. Was idiots, he, uh, morons, dipshit. Was he an uh, abusive fellow to you? Yes, very much. In what so. way? Um, always, not sexually. Yeah, but but he was he was violently. You know, I took I took a tumble down some stairs because I've of taken, him. Yeah, um, I've taken some serious serious. I would say mental abuse until I was for eighteen years until I was eighteen. And your mom was where? Oh, she's there. She's still there. Well, though they got divorced and finally when I was 18. Luckily, they stayed together for me. Yeah. That was great. So she just took that shit. There's actually four of us. Um, four of you? Four of us. I have an older brother, and then I have two little sisters. How'd your older brother turn out? Uh, he did, Last I heard, he just got out of jail for heroin. So he's doing pretty good. He's doing... <laughs> he's out. He's doing pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> what about the younger ones? Uh, one of them went to Jerry Falwell's school on the East Coast. Uh-huh. Uh, and is a right-wing conservative 
serious Christian. Uh-huh. Um, and thank God she's, you know, married to a guy with cankles who looks like a lesbian and they're raising these children to not, um, like, understand facts. Yeah, yeah. Or have knowledge. Yeah. Uh, and then my other little sister is phenomenal. She's a dental assistant and she's hilarious and she's really, we're the only ones that speak. Were you brought up with the Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Catholic, well, Jesus? Catholic Yeah. Then I was kicked out of Catholic school. Yeah. Behavior issues. That seems common. That's sure. a good source of material. Sure. Yeah, I haven't touched on it. Why? I don't know. Okay. I feel like Cor- Carlin covered all yeah, that. It's we're all, all done. We're all set. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, uh, and then 13 years old, uh, my mom decides to become a reborn. Is it reborn? Born again. Born again mm-hmm. Christian. I don't even think they call them born agains anymore. There's something else now. Well, she was definitely. If you asked her, my mom discovers Jesus. Yeah. Big time. As yeah. though he's, they're high fiving. Like yeah. That kind of relationship. Talk, talking a lot about him. S- seeing, inspired by, wanting, knowing all. She saw Jesus. Yeah. In things or. Just she just. About? It, he's everywhere. He's oh, everywhere. Jesus is everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. In every action, every thought, you know, all that. Well, she got the full, full th- hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. Just and the whole brain went. Whole gone. brain went Jesus. Gone. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Uh, went to Christian, a Christian church called Grace Brethren. Yeah. Uh, we would foot wash. Uh huh. This is, this is the thing that we had to do. My mom would say to me, I had, I'm 13 years old, you have to wash another person. It's a baptismal, uh, ceremony mm-hmm. that we did. And, uh, then I got, Full submerged, mm-hmm. you know, where you put the thing on, you sit in the tub, and they do the thing. The mm-hmm. I got that done, mm-hmm. so I'm all set there. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure heaven is imminent. Uh, and then um, they finally got divorced when I was 18. She remarried some guy from that exact church, right? Dale. Dale also <laughs> works at Boeing. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He doesn't. Does your father still work at Boeing? No, retired. Dad married a lady. Mobile gums at 33. Got all the teeth yanked. Has uh-huh. fake teeth. Uh huh. They mobile gums. Is that a thing? Mobile gums is like if you if you have mobile gums. From what my sister tells me, not the really religious one, but the the, the dentist. She's, she, sure. she knows. Sure. She knows, she about, knows mobile. about mobile gums. Yeah. I've never heard of mobile gums. No, I haven't either. I'm but, I'm ready to learn. So my sister's like, you have mobile gums, which means her gums are like so I believe rotted. Yeah. Or yeah, rotted. Yeah. That the teeth, they, 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 so they, they're, they're just moving. They can move. There's no stability in right. the mouth. Right. It's kind of a nightmare if you think about it. A lot of teeth moving around. Well, yeah. So she had all her teeth pulled. Yanked. And she has false teeth. Correct. And your dad is still with her. I, I have not spoken to him in 10 years. Really? He, yeah. He does live in a trail. They do live in a double wide. In Kent. He lives at the ba- a base of Mount Rainier. In a double wide trailer. That's and he his has retirement. Him. Yeah, he's 15 wiener dogs. Okay. 15 wiener dogs in a double wide at the base of Mount Rainier. Mm-hmm. It's pretty. Uh, is it? I don't know. I, I'm not, I don't know. What is, what is your, your place pretty? Yeah. I'm not sure a double wide base of Mount Rainier's. But Mount Rainier, I, inarguably pretty. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? You're not going to, we can't, a mountain is pretty. Yeah. So in his eyes, you know, he's living it. I'm not sure. I, I would have to. I I guess I recently heard he, she left him. Because he's a uh, madman. He's a madman. So what uh, happened 10 years ago to initiate the bad ill will? Well, he's you go through. Did you visit the trailer at all? I've been there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I've been there. You slept in the trailer. No. But there was dog shit all over the place. Because he's got 15 wiener dogs? Unneutered, unfixed, whatever. Why Why wiener dogs? I'm not sure. Mm. I'm not sure that that's, I guess that that's his preference. Mm-hmm. But he's a he's a negative, horrible human being. I'm familiar with that syndrome. I had it for many years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but. <laughs> I'm over it. Okay, I know you're. I know you're over it, but halfway over. It. I just don't think. I don't really think Almost. it's. A, I, listen, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep negotiating. It. I don't think you two are the same person, though. I think there's different levels of that, and you. I don't see you as that. 
Look, no. I didn't know you. I mean, I've, we've, we've met and stuff, but yeah. I, I didn't really know, you know, what you had going on specifically. Yeah. But I just can't see you being. That's a, weird because it's readily available in many different formats. What I've got going on specifically. <laughs> it's just your lack of interest did not compel you that direction. <laughs> <laughs> I've made it nothing but available okay. for decades now. I think it it's is, the, I, the bulk of my work. Okay, yeah. the bulk of your work. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's a, you know, I don't think, that he's a he's a piece of shit. Yeah. The guy's a piece of shit. And so that was just a decision you made. There was no action that occurred that said, I'm done with you. No, it's it's just years and years. It was a decision that I finally made after year, you know, going through therapy and realizing that he's just toxic and negative and horrible, and all he's ever done my entire life was be a horrible parent, a failure as a father, and he, you know, he abused animals in front of me. What do you um, mean? He, you know, went to. A, a, he's got a lot of dogs. He he does now, which is so weird. But when I was growing up, my very first dog barely can even talk about it. Jones. Yeah. Founder. Ironically, yeah. we, we went on a family trip to Mount Rainier and we just pulled into a gas station and he found a, this dog. It was in a box, you know, just like a, at the gas station. They were giving him away. Puppies. Yeah. Brought it home. About six months later, he decided that that dog will live the rest of its life tied to a doghouse with like a three foot long rope. Uh huh. And that was it. And it would go. It never could run free. It could never do anything. He blamed it on us. He bl- He would. He would How say. So? He would just say, you know, that 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 the dog is barking. The dog's been barking for three days because you guys aren't out feeding it or taking care of it or sitting with it. Uh-huh. And by the way, the dog had to live in its own human shit. I mean, its, its own, own dog shit. shit. And, your, and your dad wasn't shitting on the dog. Not that I ever saw. Right. But I. <laughs> not beyond him. Not. Wouldn't not put it past I wouldn't. Him. I wouldn't. <laughs> And, you know, just it rains a lot. Yeah. So it was just mud and shit and pee and this rope and the dog was covered in it. Ultimately ended up dying at like four years old, threw it in a wheelbarrow, made us get in the car. And he was like, that's what you, that's what you guys did. That's what you guys did. And I was like, it was very, very traumatic. How old were you? Um, during that, I think it's, it was four year period. So probably the dog Jones probably died around 13, 13 and a half. You were was, 13. Yeah. It was oh, terrible. That's a horrible time. Horrible. Horrible. And he would do crazy shit. Like I was going to my dance. I had a seventh grade dance. I remember and my friend came over and we we're all, I had all, you know, curled my hair, yeah. crimson hair, you know, hairspray, Aquanet, just yeah. d- dude it up looking yeah. for a good it's a finger great banging. time. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah. finger banging. Good finger banging. And that's, by the way, that's a lost art. That's another thing. But yeah. I'm hoping it comes back. Yeah, I, I, I think that was the first time I finger banged a girl. It was in seventh grade. Yeah, yeah, seventh grade. I didn't know what to do. I, sure. yeah, I did not have any craft at that time. Yeah. I was just happy to be in there. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> Wiggled it around a little bit. Yeah. Felt the territory. Yeah. Had no idea what it was supposed to do. Uh-huh. Smelled my finger after. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I was very proud of myself. Now, how did she respond? I'm not sure. I, I, was I so... can guarantee you I know how she responded. What's... Yeah. Ow. Uh-huh. I bet she was like, ow. I don't think I was violent. Well, yeah, I know, but 13-year-old boys, I mean, just like, I'm, I remember. I was big into, you know, I, I just didn't, I, didn't have no idea what was well, supposed to happen. I know. There. I just wanted to feel it. Right. I was, I, you know, I was amazed that there was more than one hole. You know, when someone told me that there was like there was an asshole, and then there's the uh, vagina hole, and then there's a hole they pee at. I'm like, this sounds complicated. <laughs> so, how will I know I'm not in my fingers not in the asshole when I'm in there? Because you got to go through the pants. You're not going to be naked at seventh grade. Right. How do we know? Right. And how gotta, did you? How did you? It felt like something I'd imagine a vagina to feel like. Did not feel like an asshole. I didn't have that resistance that yeah. an asshole might. And I know that the pee hole you can't. Yeah, that's you, you can't. can't. You can barely see it. Barely. Yeah. So I you, mean, I've never really looked hard. Yeah, but there's a lot of skin to get past, and you know that varies. You know. <laughs> so all right. So. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, and dry humping too. I want to tell you something. A lot of that. Love it. Love I'm it. Very good at that. Oh, fantastic! It ruins jeans, but. Jeans now you can buy on eBay for like I, half the price. I used to come in my pants constantly. <laughs> it would because it was like this is something I can handle. The other mm-hmm. thing seems like a lot of work. Right. And I'm not good at it. Yeah. Uh, she seems to be enjoying this thing sure. with the pants on. Yeah. And then I know that when I finish, it's over, and mm-hmm. I'm embarrassed. But you know, uh, no one gets hurt is the point. 
I got hurt because uh, I was like, why can't I get make this happen outside of my uh, pants? <laughs> that that took another number of years. I mean, yeah, after, it really for me to really master that, I was well into college. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Great, great. Yeah, so, all right, so well, you're all... you you reach a lot of people. It'd be nice if you could get the word out about finger bang. Yeah. Well, what do you want to say, Rebecca? Let's focus in. What's the message you want out there? Well, I just think that it's great. It's it's easily tra- you can travel. Mm-hmm. You can it can be done anywhere, mm-hmm. anytime. Mm-hmm. No one gets hurt. There's mm-hmm. never your mm-hmm. neck. Look, you you may get. Um, now, are you looking you, to come when you're finger banged? Maybe, yeah. Maybe. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna play the game, don't you want to win? Sure, but okay. that that takes some guidance and some focus. And are we talking uh, a clitoral uh, orgasm or a G spot orgasm with the finger? I mean, what? whatever's available. <laughs> How much success have you had uh, with this uh, finger banging tour? P- pretty good. You pretty do all good. right with it? I do all right. I do yeah. all. <laughs> I do all right. I'm actually gonna looking for sponsors. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> it's a lost art form that I think people just skip over is my point. And I don't think we should. We all move real fast, you know, with the internet, with social media, with how fast everything moves. I don't think we have to go so fast. Yeah. You got to slow it down. Slow it down. Yeah. Yeah. How about Let's you? Let's not freak gen- out. And- yeah. Why is everyone running? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to, you don't want to lose the mood. We got to get this thing in there. Everyone's so <laughs> rushing yeah, all the yeah. time. Anyway, so you dressed up for your seventh grade dance. Oh yeah, yeah, good, good memory. Fucks that up. Goes get out there, he says to me, because he knows I'm just about to leave. It. This is the kind of shit he would pull. Yeah, get out there, Mm -hmm. change the rope on the doghouse. So, in other words, remove a rope that's two feet long where the dogs can't move anyways, and put on another two foot long rope in the pouring down rain and the mud and the shit and the pee. And I'm dressed. Yep. Guess what? I had to do it. Why? No choice. You do it or you get smacked around. Period. Like like smacked around how hard? Um it would depend on the on the the infraction. But you get you piss him off enough, you may take a tumble down the stairs. You may get a grab on the throat where you can't breathe. There's there were times where I had his handprint on my neck. Couldn't get my you know, taking off my shirt would hurt. So no one thought to call social services. I ran my my mother, who I don't talk to. Why? Well, she's an idiot. Okay. Um, she she too was like you know, she she was just like that's your that's your father. By the way, she that's how she talks too. She's not, New England? No, <laughs> Seattle. Okay. Oh, that I mean, sounded a little Midwestern. It sounded like yeah, like Minnesota, like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 And she's just like that's your father, and that's what you know. You God says that that you just gotta honor your mother and your father. I was like. Um, oh, he's choking me, or if my room isn't clean, he's smacking me in the closet. Yeah, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, just just parenting. And why why don't you talk to your mother exactly? Well, at some point you just go. You went through therapy, right? Yeah, I, I've gone through periods of not talking to them, to both of them. Right, so you go through it. And you decide. For the last trials, you kind of grow up and you just go, you know, these people are not adding anything. Well, I can see how your father, who's violent and toxic, is, you know, there, there's a reason for personal and emotional safety not to engage. But your mother seems manageable. Well, she she's not. Mm. It depends. She's on the other spectrum. He's this crazy, violent, yelling, abusive, yeah. negative psycho. Yeah. And she is this passive-aggressive... Everything is but Jesus. Like that, I don't know which one. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's the worst of both kind. And what does she, what does she live in? A trailer. She lives she, in a trailer. Yeah, too. she too lives in a trailer. So they're both living in trailers, and you don't talk to them. Yeah. And you have closure around that. Yep, I do. I really think that I do. I and mean, therapy helped you. Yeah, I mean, I could do another. I could easily do another good round of it. What's a round? How long is that? I don't know. I, mean, yeah. I don't know. You tell me. I don't fucking know. I've only like people think I'm Mr. Therapy. I'm, I'm relatively new to, to to therapy again. Well, I've gone through a few rounds. Well, give me a round. What do you got? One month? No, that's not enough for anything. A year. That's a good start. All right. Well, I, <laughs> I think I think we just determined what a round was. Yeah, but a lot of people don't think therapy is worth anything. I mean, what does a therapist know? Well, you know what they do. They have a chance to stand back and tell you something, yeah. right? Yeah. That's it. And sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not good. Yeah, so should I go should I go for another round? Yeah, probably should. 
Yeah? Why? You got problems? Well, I mean, I suppose. I, I mean, I don't have a mom and dad. It's pretty tragic. You have them. They're just in boxes <laughs> in Washington. <laughs> no. She's not the time. <laughs> They're both in metal I've, boxes. I will tell you, I've, every time my sister calls, I, I, I'm always like, oh my God, she's going to say, is she going to say that one of them is dead? I, mean, I don't know how their health is. I know my dad had a heart attack at one point, I'd heard. So you only talk to your sister? Yeah. She's fina- she's fantastic. That's great. She's you, hilarious. You got one. Got one. I got a, you got a, do you have one? I got a little brother, yeah. Yeah. I talked to him. Okay. We were good. Yeah. But do you, um, do you ever miss Seattle? Where's your little sister living? She lives in, she lives in Auburn. Okay. Yeah, I do. I don't. I don't miss Seattle whatsoever at all. I left as soon as I was eighteen, and I moved to Chicago. Really? I lived in yeah. I lived in Chicago for for uh, ten years. Doing what? I was a janitor on an airplane. This airplane thing and the dog thing, which we'll get to later, runs in your family. Airplane and dog thing. What do you mean? Your dad worked for Delta. Oh Airlines. yeah, no, that there was no. I worked for Delta Airlines cleaning planes, yeah. cabin service. That's what got me to Chicago. But then I I auditioned for Second City. Yeah. Like a year after I got there, and I went through their training program and all that crap. Wow. Yeah. Never got never got it hired. Right. I'm not a great improviser. But you're, mean, you're a dynamic character. Well. <laughs> you put that on a business card. Wait a minute. No, but I mean, well, like, it seems like, you know, you could you definitely know how to hold the stage, and you have a way of being. Well. It's very defined. Yeah. No one, no one is like you. Right. Yeah. That's a blessing and a curse. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. But I mean, the improvising, or do you improvise at all, or have you? Not in a structured way. Well, that's the problem. That's what I'm telling you. Is like, I and I'm, I went through Second City, and I I studied with like really. It was there when I was going through Second City. You, the main stage cast who was on stage, who who I got to see every single day. Because you, you, when you're a student back then, when you're a student, yeah, you could you go in and watch everybody perform and stuff, and it was awesome. And I got you know. Um, Steve Carell, Steve Colbert, um, Nia Vardalis, Mitch Rouse, yeah. Amy Sedaris. Yeah. All these guys were on stage. Amazing to, you know, Farley and all these people were, were there. Were there? Yeah. Wow. Great time to be there. It was, yeah. I was 20 yeah. years old. And, I'll and be you had not done stand up yet? Never. You just wanted to take a class because you thought this was a thing? No, I met a, I met one of the actresses. Her name is Rose Abdu. I met her and this other actor named Jimmy Doyle in the park uh-huh. with my husband. Because I'd just gotten married. To who? To this guy named William Corey. He was my husband. In Chicago. Yeah, but I, when I was 18 years old, I had gotten hired at Delta Airlines, and I flew to uh, England to because I was obsessed with Morrissey at the time. So you were working at Delta at eight, 18 doing what? Being a janitor on the plane. Yeah. Cabin service, vacuuming. Yeah. Uh, don't like Delta. Hate it. Yeah. They're the worst. Yeah. Pilots are really aggressive flyers as well. Really? I'll say it. Yeah. A lot of them are military, ex-military pilots. Yeah. yeah. And they, they land real hard. They take off real sharp. Yeah. They hit air pockets. They can't manage it. Really? Yeah. What do you mean they can't manage air I've pockets? Been, let me tell you something. I've been in a Delta. I've been on a Delta flight, and we've hit an air pocket, and I thought, that's it. We were unmanageable. We were going back. It was not. You, you hit air pockets all the time. Yeah. We hit an air. It was on a Delta flight, and all the the takeoffs and landings. I hate, yeah. and I hate a lot of the behavior of the staff. Yeah, and the rules because I was one of them. Right. Went to Atlanta. Went did the whole thing. Their home, their hub, and all that. But just their their flying techniques are really really not great, and the the pilots are all uh, mili- ex military. So it's not like they're they're looking to <laughs> to keep everyone comfy. They're like, let's just do this. Yeah. They hit an air pocket. We dropped. We went nose first. We hit the air pocket, and I could feel the front of the nose of the plane, like, go. And I was like, hey, I screamed out loud. Yeah. Pulled out of it. Just My point is that this is not pretty, and I don't care for them. So you Why fly to like England. Them? Yeah. And what happens oh. in England? Meet a guy there, 18 years old. Meet him, second day I'm there. Eight. Finger bang or no finger bang? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was New Year's Eve. Went to Trafalgar Square. Uh, William Corey, 6'2", black Irish, chef, gorgeous, mm. huh. great accent. Uh-huh. Um, lived in, from Essex. Uh-huh. Essex is a really hard part of England. It's uh-huh. a very tough, very Kent-esque. Uh-huh. It's like a ghetto. Was he an angry man? No, dad died of alcohol poisoning when he was four. Hmm. Um, mom mar- remarried this guy who was a 
scumbag and abused the other kids and uh he wasn't angry he was actually very very calm and very sweet and uh-huh. gentle yeah but n- not good at really talking about stuff mm-hmm. um gorgeous stunning gorgeous man and fell madly in love with him go back home he gives me his earring very 80s yeah gives me his earring we're dri- right, driving over the, the London Bridge, takes yeah. out his earring, puts it in my ear, coming back, coming to America to get that earring. Yeah. He tells me. Yeah. Go back to, go back home. Three months later, never returns a call, never returns a letter, nothing. Yeah. I get on an airplane, cause I can't, I work for Delta, it costs me 40 bucks. I go to England by myself on a Friday. Yeah. Cause I want to confront him at work, cause he's a chef in, in a Piccadilly circus at the Holiday Inn. Uh huh. I go to England by myself, cause I'm mad. Let's, let's follow through. You had to stay mad the whole way. I was furious. That must have been furious because you were flying from Chicago. It's probably about eight or nine hours, just a flight, right? Yeah. And then like about two hours on each side. So you were mad. You made a plan, and you had to stay focused and mad for I, about a, a while. Got off the pl- a long, long time, half yeah. a day, yeah. I'd say. Livid. Furious. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you get off the plane, you go to Piccadilly Circus. No, I go to the bed and breakfast first, drop my shit off, clean up the areas. Yeah. Get on the train, go to Piccadilly Circus, walk into his work. He's there. Uh-huh. Working. I had no idea if he was or not, because uh-huh. I couldn't get a hold of him. Uh-huh. I didn't even know if he even worked there. Uh-huh. I tell the guy at the front desk, is William Corey working? Because Corey's not my last name. Yeah. But I kept it. They're like, yes, he is. Can I ask it? I said, no, you can't. You can't ask who's asking. <laughs> and they went ahead and got him anyway. They said, "Ma'am, we we do need." I said, "I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care what you need. I'm here, and I'm going to need him to come right out of the side service door, which I saw, and I need him to come right out, and I'll be standing there. That's what you can tell him that there's just." And they said, "Well, could we? No, you can't tell him who I am. You can't tell him my name." So they said, "Okay." I was standing there. I would not leave until they made a phone call to the kitchen. Uh-huh. I could hear the guy on the phone. He was a small American. She seems a bit pissed. Uh-huh. She would like to speak to you. Uh-huh. So they hang up the phone. They said, he'll be coming out that door in just a few minutes. I go, great. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Thank you for your Does service. Does this end with him proposing? Uh-huh. Keep going. So he comes out the door. His face looks like he's... Uh, he's in shock, uh-huh. sweating. An angry American has flown uh-huh. across the pond. And by the way, the outfit I was wearing then, wow. Good? Terrible. Okay. Bad news. Yeah, you should have done a special in it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, <laughs> I should have went on Conan. Yeah. 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 Should have okay. saved that outfit. What, yeah. what, what was the outfit that oh. this... This, this sandbagged man okay, ready? opened the door to. Beyond sandbag. Yeah. Paisley. Yeah. Yellow. Yeah. Paisley's brown. Uh-huh. Paisley's brown. Uh-huh. Uh, they were tapered, pleated, uh-huh. black slacks. Uh-huh. Don't remember the shoes. I think I blocked it out. Yeah. He walks out. Yeah. And I go, hey. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> with, the, with those eyes, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> What's yeah. up? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> he's like, he's very soft-spoken. So, Hello. And I go, <laughs> and I go, I'm not kidding. Just in the neighborhood, <laughs> thought I'd stop by. <laughs> Great tone. I said, uh, where's the letters? <laughs> I sent you a lot. Of fucking letters. Uh huh. Where are they? You forgot. Uh huh. You didn't. You didn't write back. It wasn't important. <laughs> I said, "Remember this earring? I had the earring. Remember I told you you gave me the earring was in your ear." Yeah. yeah. I pointed at it. Yeah. I said, "Uh, did you forget about that? Yeah. I didn't." <laughs> yeah. So I took it out. I said, "Give me your hand." He put his hand out. I slapped it <laughs> in his hand, and I said, "You go fuck yourself." <laughs> Turned around, walked away. Very dramatic. Uh-huh. That is when you exit. Yeah. You don't linger. Yeah. You have done it. You have flown across. You're saying this as if this is a common thing, and that you know this, you've talked to other people that have done this. 
And there's an instruction. This is how it's done when people fly across country. Actually, I didn't really realize until this very moment how actually uncommon it is, to be honest. Uh Uh-huh. So I go and I do that and I'm like, that's it. And I was like shaking, my heart's beating out of my chest. I'm like, fucking did I did it. Yeah. Fuck him. Yeah. And how dare you fucking fuck me? Like in my yeah. mind, I'm yeah. like, so I'm storming down the street. Yeah. He dramatically comes running back. He's shaking, you know, he's got the shaky lip. Look, can you just please talk to me? Please talk to me. And I said, no, no, I've said everything I need to say. You're a fucko. Fuck yourself. How yeah. dare you? Yeah. Of course, he, you know, it's hot. So yeah. we talk. He yeah. Go back to the canteen. He gets me a cup of coffee out of the machine. <laughs> out of the machine? Yeah. Classy. Uh-huh. So we sit down. We're having a cup of coffee. In yeah. walks a girl. Really well-dressed. Yeah. The opposite of how I look. Yeah. She yeah. looks great. <laughs> yeah. Tall, thin. I'm short. Yeah. I, I'm a horrible. I... I, I I'm wearing the worst outfit. Yeah. She walks in. She starts crying. She looks at me, looks at him, storms out. This happened in the canteen. Yep. So something's up. Yep. Mm-hmm. I go, who the fuck was that? <laughs> Did you have the other ear? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he yeah. was banging her. Uh, whatever. I married him. Huh? You I married him. How does it go? How does it get from the canteen to marriage? Well, uh, I go back to Chicago. He ends up coming out to Chicago about three months later. We take the bus down to City Hall. So we 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 get a dog. We adopt a dog, and we're in the park. We're in a in a um, Lincoln Park. Uh huh. And uh, these two actors from Second City walk by, and they're like, "Can we see your dog?" I was like, "Yeah." His little German Shepherd puppy. Yeah. So we start talking. They're like, they're like, do you know what Second City is? I was like, no. I'd literally been in, in Chicago. I think at this point, uh, like two months, uh-huh. eight weeks, uh-huh. and he's out there now. Yeah. Here's an um, here's an unbelievable fact. He bought a plane ticket to San Francisco, and yeah. took a bus from San Francisco to Chicago. Uh huh. Because he thought San Francisco was right next to Chicago. Uh huh. It was just a side note. This is good uh, good anyway, stock to yeah. marry into. Yeah. So wait, so you married him. You were there for what, less than a year in Chicago, and he flew out and you just said, fuck it, let's get married. Yeah. He needed he, a green he, card. He did. He did need a green card because he was there. You know, he ended up staying there. He's working at the table at some restaurants. He's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant chef. How long did you stay married? Five years. Why did you stop? Well, I was an idiot. You were an idiot. No, he is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you just you get you know, and you're young, and the the fights and the thing and the, ugh, it just not not good. I mean, got married. I got married at 20 years old. Got divorced at 25 years old, and we're our birthday is one day apart. So you just it just fizzled out. It was well, no, there's big fights and you know all that crap and the yeah. and you know you know separations and the walking in the rain and the crying and the garbage just. Like it's it was like one big it was like one big Alanis Morissette video or yeah. something. It was just like a long, dramatic. Did, and I found that was, video start you know with your trip <laughs> to England because I'd like that. That would be. I good guess video. it does now. I mean, I yeah, I should start there. It's insane, right? To think and about then, that. And then do a time montage. Yeah. Thing and, oh, by the way, found out his mother was the one stealing all of the letters and throwing them throwing them away because she knew how. Much he liked me. So, um, yeah, I was married to him. And then I was engaged to another guy in Chicago after that. Kept trying. Yeah, yeah. And I found him in a uh, a uh, film with a man. No. Yeah. How? What? Two and a half years. We you, were were, with, you were engaged to him for how long? Two and a half. Well, we were together two and a half years, engaged for a year. And you're what? You're, you're I'm at 20- a movie. Oh, oh no! I'm at home. Uh-huh. He's jogging, uh-huh. and he jogged a lot. And I lived on the lake. Do you know Chicago very well? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, I lived in Rogers Park. The end. I like Rogers Park. Okay, that's where Main Stage com- uh, Main Stage Theater is. I play there a lot. Oh, okay, okay. So he would go jogging on the the lake a lot. Mm-hmm. You know what goes on on the lake? Cruising. Yeah. A little of that. A little bit. Mm hmm. Um, and, you know, just, I'm not saying, I don't have facts, but, you know, I did laundry. Mm hmm. 
and I would find numbers mm-hmm. of uh, just numbers of guys. Bruce, Doug, running buddies. Yeah, he meets him running on the. And I said, you know, what's weird is I've run before. Yeah. In my life. <laughs> yeah. And I don't. No one has ever, at any point in my entire life, I had this conversation with him. I said, mm-hmm. no one has ever, at any point in my entire life, ever, ever, ran up to me and handed me their number. <laughs> It's like that, you know. It's just, I don't know. I mean, I, these guys, we just run a lot, you know. Yeah, That's yeah. what happens. Yeah. You meet a guy, you're running, and I said, "Who has a pen? Yeah. Who, who? Because that is, I literally was like, who, who has? Do you have uh-huh. a scrap of paper and a pen on you? And when you run up, are you like, hey, you seem to be doing the same action I'm doing? Do you want to? I don't get it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, four of those. Four numbers. Running buddies. Fine. You let that go. Because you can't prove anything. If someone's saying that they just like to run and they make friends... But, but you, your suspicion was raised a little? Or were you just completely bearded out? <laughs> well... I guess a beard knows they're a beard. Were you in complete denial no, I didn't. First time I ever met him, he was in a gay play naked. He was on a, a play, in a play on Belmont Avenue at this this gay theater, and he did work at a gay bar. But wait, all of those things sa- sound like this is may, may, maybe a gay guy. Yeah, but but no, I mean it, it was weird. It was like, I, and I'm a real, in, I'm a real get inside your shit kind of, mm. you know. Mm-hmm. Don't I seem that way? You did. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a rough sell now, but I'm following. Well, you know <laughs> I'm I mean, on board. Sure. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> this guy really Come on. threw you a curveball, I yeah. guess. Yeah, because Gay Bar quit working at, went back to school to be, be a teacher. Yeah. Okay, so he, he then, um, whatever, he just, bottom line, I'm at home. I'm on loading boxes. Yeah. It's, I've been in the, we've been together for two and a half years. We moved into this new mm-hmm. place. We'd been there for like six to eight months. Yeah. I'm unloading a box. Yeah. There's boxes. You're engaged at this time. Yeah. Okay. You got a ring. I do. Mm. On my hand. Sure. Unloading boxes with the ring on your hand. Pull out a, a VHS. Like a hand done one or like a. Well, it's it's a little indie, but it's done. Mm-hmm. Like someone oh, box. Right. someone a, went to Kinkos. You can buy I'll it. say that. Okay. You can buy this. It would be in the rental section. or. I don't know about that. It's not that. What's in- it called? There was no name on it. What was on the cover? Uh, he was laying on a man, on a man's chest with three roses, and his name was on it, uh-huh. and the other guy's name was on it. His real name? Yeah. So this was not like for, this was like a, a love letter between two men. It wasn't like available for. No, I'll tell you exactly what it was. It wasn't, I don't think it was available for, I don't think you could go to Blockbuster. So did you throw it in the, in the VHS? Sure did. Yeah, you did. Sure did. Uh huh. And wait, how was sure that? Sure did. Couldn't get it in there fast enough. Yeah. That's one of those things you want to do quick. Real, real quick. <laughs> Can't, I couldn't get it out of the box fast. I couldn't get shit on fast enough. Engagement ring shaking with shaking. your hands. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't, just, you want to do it so uh-huh. fast. Yeah. I, I put it in. I play. I'm in front. Of, it's literally, I'm standing alone. It was daylight. Watching your fiance. Doing acting. There's some acting going on. That's how it opens. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Apparently, it's a student film for Columbia College. And there's a scene in front of a fireplace. Yeah. These two guys. My fiance in underwear and nothing else. Yeah. And the man, the other man in underwear and nothing else. Uh And then some dancing starts. Just, there's, they start moving. You're thinking still an art film. Maybe. At this point, I'm thinking, what the fuck is going on? (laughs) Yeah. Okay. I guess that was answered for you. They start making out. Now, I can't help uh-huh. that I'm kind of turned on because mm-hmm. that's who I am as a yeah. lady. Yeah. But I'm very aware that that's my fiance. Mm-hmm. And I'm also aware that that is not what I was aware of. No not, one is not ever. Not in the agreement. Not new knowledge, new information, as our friend would say. New information. New information. Mm-hmm. 
No one at any time ever in two and a half years ever said, hey, Rebecca, just a side note, I did a gay film. Mm-hmm. Did he do it a long time ago? Or was it... Apparently it was two years before I met him. Okay. No relief there. Nope. So I'm looking for boners because I want to know. I know you're acting, but I also want to know if you have a boner. Now, I know I've learned from a very young age, you don't, boners don't mean a lot. Boners are not something you should be flattered by. Yeah. They happen. They come and go. So I'm thinking if he has a boner, it's still not, like, in my brain I'm thinking this is, I was thinking so many. Did he have a boner? Yes. Uh Uh-huh. He did. It was not out. There was Uh no jerking or sucking or any of that stuff. Yet or at all? Well, here's what's unbelievable. This is this is the part that literally it, it hurts me. I stopped it when he ended up laying on top of the guy in yeah. a bed. Yeah. Chest on chest. Yeah. Boxers to boxers. Yeah. Making out yeah. pretty good. Yeah. I stopped it. It's something I regret for the rest of my life because I don't I don't know. I I to this day I do not know. I stopped it. I was so outraged uh-huh. that I took it out, I put it in, and I waited for him to get home. And when he got home, I sat him down, mm-hmm. and I said, "You know, how was your day?" Hey, you said, "Hey, yeah, how, how was your day?" How was your day? Yeah, good. Yeah, was it? <laughs> was it? <laughs> was it good? Was it a good day? Yeah, great. Yeah. How's yours? Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Mine was wonderful, my day. Yeah. Um, is there anything at all, if I were to ask you right now, that you have failed to tell me? There's a tiny little piece of you, a little tiny piece of information that you could think of if I were to ask you, is there anything on earth that you would want to tell yeah. me? Yeah. Does anything come to mind? Yeah. No. He's like, no. Uh-huh. Why? No. Not one not one thing. Yeah. No. Not you can't think of a single fucking thing. Yeah. No. Uh huh. I took out. I had the tape. Yeah. I go. Bam. What about that? What about you having a boner with a man? That doesn't ring a bell. His face was like he was horrified. Yeah. I saw that. This and is before goes, the internet. This guy lived a tape around. Student film. Why would I tell you about that? Student film. Why would I? I swear to you. Why would I? I said, I'm going to tell you something right now. That is an important detail to tell somebody that you are going to, you intend on spending the rest of your life with, that you happen to have a boner with a man and it was filmed. How does that escape you? How does that escape you? He didn't say, so you didn't watch the whole movie? He didn't. Uh, he did not. Oh boy! And I never did watch the whole movie. I'm, I'm so mad about it. So what? What happened? He basically. This is what's insane is that, in the end, I just I believed him, and I. He basically was just like it was a student film, and and you know is what it is, and I didn't do anything he wrong. Loved and, the guy. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I don't know. Mm. Uh, but, you know, yeah, and then I stayed with him for like another six months, and then I was like, you know what, it's a wrap on that. I don't, I'm done. Why, because more numbers, more running? No, just everything. I just couldn't, I couldn't shake it all off. It was a lot. It was a lot. And I've said to him, you know, have you ever had a penis in your mouth? I want to know right now. Have you, and I said, and, and you don't know, it's not, it's not anything to be ashamed of. Yeah. I just want you to tell me, have you ever put a penis in your mouth? I have the right to know that. I have a ring on my finger. Yeah. And he was like, no. Did you ask him the other? Did you ever tell him if you ever put a penis? Yeah. And I was like, have you ever touched a man? Have you ever wanted to be with a man? Are you a gay man? Are you gay? If you're gay, just tell me. We can totally be friends. That's a total lie. <laughs> but I was saying like, <laughs> We can be friends, but you just have to tell me. Uh-huh. And he was like, no, I am not. And I said, have you ever wanted to? You aren't living it, obviously, but have you ever wanted to? When you jog and you meet a man, what does that make you feel? He was like, Rebecca, you are fucking making shit up. There's nothing I'm going to ever say that's going to make you. I want to be with you for the rest of my life. I said, you may want to be with me for the rest of your life, but you may want to put your dick 
inside of a man, and that's fine. But what I'm asking <laughs> you to do is tell me. Anyway, it's, it's, it a, didn't work out. Rough morning, I bet. Well, it was actually afternoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And well, then I moved to, moved to back home briefly to Seattle for a minute and then moved to LA. Now, have you ever done any research on that, that guy? Where, where mm-hmm. that, and? Five years ago, I learned that if you put a person's name in Google, but you put the things around it, the, the quotes, yeah. the, the, it will narrow down the search. Yeah. Okay. Looked him up. Yeah. He's now teaching at a college in a suburb. He's teaching girls basketball. Married. Two kids. Did, did, you, uh, uh, did you keep the tape? I didn't. Anyway, what does that say? It says that I was wrong. I could have walked away from a guy who was really willing to be dedicated to me for the rest of his life. You don't know that that's true. Married two kids. So, so what? That's Some of the greatest gay men in the world have been married with kids. You then I moved it. back to Seattle for a minute mm-hmm. and saved money and moved to L.A. And started doing comedy. Literally, like, three months after I got here, I had an agent, and she said, go do stand-up comedy at the Improv. Didn't even know what the Improv was. She said it's a showcase for a thing called the the Montreal Comedy Festival. Uh-huh. First time I ever did stand-up comedy was at the Improv. Yeah. I did five minutes. Yeah. I got accepted into the Montreal Comedy Festival. And you went. New faces. New faces. How'd that go? Great. Great. Did a guest star on... Uh, Anthony Clark, you know, you know, yeah. he was hosting it. Yep. He put me on Yes Dear, did a first guest star from there. I mean, I did a lot. I got a movie. I did a lot of good stuff after that. Uh huh. Um, then completely mismanaged. All right, so you had a good run. I had a good run. I had a good run. Now I'm an uh, advocate, an activist on top of all that. And you do good comedy. You open for me. You're funny. That was really fun. Yeah. Thanks for letting me do that. Yeah. That was a good... You, you have a loyal following of people who mm. love you so much. You're so lucky. I have like 12, I think, people who are like into me. That's, well, you're just not out there enough. Yeah, well... What's So tell me about the advocacy. What's the group called? Uh, well, my foundation is called the Stand Up for Pits Foundation. And you, de- you basically deal with um, abused pits. Yes, pit bulls. Pit bulls, yeah. They're my favorite. And you have uh, uh, an abuse victim. <laughs> I do. That I you a, love. I love her so much. I, every time I think of you and her, I just remember when we were playing, what were we playing, Tile Rummy? Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> and she walked on the tiles and you went, nope. And you, <laughs> and, you put, <laughs> and you put two fingers between her eyes and she just stopped. <laughs> New thing for her. It made me laugh so hard. You just went, nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. I thought it was kind. It was amazing. It was two fingers in between her eyes and she just sort of froze. <laughs> she like thought about it. Like, this is weird. Continue to walk across. And then the I'm going to, and then I'm going to walk across. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's pretty awesome. So yeah, it's all inspired by her and you know, people How'd are, you get her? people are fucked up. Um, I got her through a small rescue group. I had lost a dog, and I was devastated by it. And I started going on a few weeks after my other dog passed away. Uh I went online and just read about her story and contacted the rescue. And someone had apparently, you know, home cropped her ears. Either I don't know, razor blades, scissors, Uh whatever. Uh Um, And someone dumped battery acid all over her back. And so she was a mess. And she'd had her knee replaced. A rescue did pull her, but they kept her alive in the South Central Shelter for like two months, which is unheard of. And so they were like, will you foster her? Because she just got her knee replaced. So I said, yeah. And of course, like three weeks later, I was absolutely in love with her. And then I started learning about how people hate them so much. And I'd be walking down the street and people would be (laughs) bolting to the other side of the street. And I, you know, I would be like, what the fuck is going on? What is going on? And I would, you know, if I, if a kid was walking toward me, the parent would, and I was like, what? The? I had no idea. I, w- I just was like, and finally I said to someone, what the fuck is your problem? Like, is this, you got a problem? And um, since then I've learned to talk <laughs> to the public a little bit better. Uh-huh. But I learned people fear these dogs for their life. And it's absolutely insane. It's absurd. And it's mainly the media and 
So I've been, I dedicated one year of my life to organize the first ever March on Washington. I've permitted the West Lawn of the U.S. Capitol myself. We got crazy 13, like the average age dog fighter is like 13 to 21 years old. They're fight, young boys are fighting dogs and mutilating them and lighting them on fire and fighting them in trunks of cars and fighting them in U-Hauls and it's insane. And it's like oh, our government has spent tons of money on studies that show that if you abuse an animal, the chances of you abusing a human is very likely that you will go on to commit a crime. So it's a societal problem. Yeah, for sure. Because I'm not a very political kind of gal. Yeah. I'm not really into that. Uh Uh-huh. But I just hate discrimination, and I hate that, you know, angry people, scared, fearful people are so quick to say, let's, you know, kill them all. Oh, one bit of kid, we'll kill it. Kill them all. It's It's insane. So I'm, I'm taking, you know, I'm, I've taken a lot of crap for it. It's not a popular cause. It's not when you say the word pit bull. Yeah. Immediately, people are like, mm, mm, so. "What's the flack you get?" I've had death threats from people who hate pit bulls. They've said, "I hope you know." People you're... who are victims of pit bulls, or I've or, never or... met or or ever spoken to a person who's a victim of a pit bull, and I certainly. Don't I'm I'm I would never if a pit bull hurt a human, I certainly don't think that that's okay. I don't think that an animal hurting an animal or an animal hurting a person or vice versa is okay, in by any means. But I also think knowledge and facts are important. And you know the for over three decades, this breed is the most targeted breed in the world. They're they're banned everywhere. They are they can be seized from your hands as you're walking down the street in Canada, and all. it's insane. So yeah, it's been a huge part of my life and it's, the flack is just like, you know, you don't, you don't, I guess, I mean, have you ever stood up for something that you really, really believe in? There's always people that hate you. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, they'll hate you just for believing in yourself. (laughs) (laughs) You feel good? Yeah, I can't wait for my dad to hear it. Do you think he has a radio? He needs a computer. Oh. He's not going to hear it. Yeah. I feel like we taught. I think that a lot of people learned stuff today. Sure, sure. I, a lot about a lot of things. <laughs> you know how to you know stalk someone internationally, the momentum needed, <laughs> the right. telltale signs that someone you might be engaged to is gay, <laughs> right? Uh, the need for more finger banging, right? What else did we, <laughs> we really did? Mobile gums. We learned about mobile gums. We learned about also um, animal abuse. Activism. But, yeah, and, and, and specifically the job of plugging the holes on the on the planes. <laughs> With putty. With putty. And that... Uh, we hate know, Delta. Yeah, Delta's bad. You know, grabbing uh, your child by the neck is abuse, but sometimes you can't do anything about it because mommy's simple. <laughs> That's exactly... <laughs> <laughs> I see you have a needlepoint thing there. I may actually needlepoint that up. Mommy is simple. simple. Are you conscious of the fact that you had that traumatic experience when you were a young teenager with that dog that your father abused? Is, you, do you see that as a source to your to, to your activism? I see it as a I see it as the absolute one hundred percent source of why I do this because I the dog's name was Jones. I can't even talk about the dog with my sister or any yeah. it's like something that we it's this really gross dark secret uh-huh so it's something i you know i wake up thinking about i have nightmares about still yeah oh yeah my God. it's a horrible 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 feeling and it's a it's a, a hundred percent i think it's what definitely without question it's what makes me it gives me the strength to continue on if when people are being like when I'm getting bombarded by the animals the stupid idiots in the animal community or idiots that hate pit bulls or idiots in general telling me I don't know what I'm doing or doing it wrong or whatever I think that that's that experience carrying it with me through for years still being disgustedly haunted by it enraged by it uh-huh uh, yeah, 
because I I feel that you know obviously my my cause is for pit bulls because I I feel like in a lot of ways they're like that dog they have no voice they're innocent they're being they have there's there's there there is no way for them that the underdog they are never ever going to be unless someone stands up and does something they're never ever going to be safe <laughs> what why are you laughing it's getting I'm, me I'm getting choked up because you're are you're, you well you're you're the underdog too well. <laughs> Thank you. Man, she's full of the beans, that Rebecca Corey. That was fun. Look, folks, as always, WTFPod.com for all your WTF Pod needs. If you're new to the show, go uh, go get that free app. Upgrade to premium. Stream them all. Do it up. Leave some comments. Do whatever you want. Buy some merch. My hands, my hands are tingling. Uh, maybe it's because I drink too much. Pow! Look out, I just shit my pants. Just coffee.coop, available at WTF Pod. Get the WTF blend. I get a little, a little on the back end there. I, I seem kind of chipper, but I'm a little out of my mind. Oh, tonight, uh, I'm Aaron on IFC. Boomer. Boomer. Boomer lives!